Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be crocheting this really easy Ava fringed poncho. You won't believe how simple it is. So getting started here guys, we're going to be using some Lion Brand yarn. This is from their LB collection that's sold exclusively on lionbrand.com and this is the Cotton Bamboo. Now I haven't worked with this yarn before designing this project and I gotta tell you I love it. It's lightweight, it's kind of between a level 3 and a level 4 worsted weight yarn. I'm going to be using a J or 6 millimeter hook. It's going to give us a little bit of a bigger stitch um, for this yarn but it's really soft it's really lightweight it's got a little bit of a shine to it without being too shiny and this LB collection is only sold online you can only get it from lionbrand.com and I know that ordering yarn online is not something that maybe you do maybe you always shop at you know big box stores or local yarn shops but the reason they do this LB collection only online is so that they can offer really high quality yarns at a more a uh, reasonable price so that they don't have like the wholesale situation with big box stores and then they mark it up and it's out of everyone's price range. So for this quality of yarn, everything in the LB collection, but especially this cotton bamboo, it's really, really affordable for the quality of yarn that you're getting. So think of it as kind of the exclusive like platinum line of yarn. So uh, you're going to need a different number of skeins depending on what size you're making. I'm here making the size medium large in this video. Um, and basically it's just two rectangles. No matter what size you're making, it's just going to vary based on kind of your stitch counts. Um, so make sure to reference that uh, written pattern in the link in the description box below. That's going to give you the different sizing for the extra small all the way up to 4XL. So really it's just two basic rectangles that are going to be kind of folded up and seamed up and you're going to have a seam running right in the front of the poncho and it's going to create kind of a heart shape um, once you sew everything up. And the construction of this is kind of unique and a little different. Um, so I hope that that is something fun and different for you. It's not hard or difficult or confusing at all, but I wanted to make sure to film a video tutorial for you guys, especially my beginners out there. This is a very, very beginner friendly um, first garment pattern. It's really, really easy to make. It's really mindless and it comes out really cute and trendy and fashion forward. And it's just nice and simple. You're just going to make two rectangles. You're going to add the trim around the collar and then the edging trim around the hemline and then that fun tassel fringe. I'm going to show you everything you need to know right here in the video, but make sure that you reference that link in the description box below for the written pattern in case you're making anything other than the medium slash large size. That's what I'm making in this video. This is a quite roomy pattern, so if you want things to be more fitted, more snug, or shorter, um, then definitely size down, but this fits, you know, fairly true to size. So if you are falling in the medium-large range, this will look great. If you fall, you know, like just follow, you get what I'm saying. Just follow the thing. So, slip knot. Start with a slip knot. We're going to get our hook in there. And we're just going to start with a regular old foundation chain. So remember chain is just yarn over and pull through. We're starting our two rectangular panels here which make up almost the entire poncho. So just go ahead and work up a whole foundation chain for the medium large size. We're going to be chaining 69 stitches. Again, the written pattern is going to give you adjustments for all the different sizes offered extra small through 4XL. So it's really easy to adjust things as you need to. And also don't be afraid of the written pattern. I know that a lot of you come to YouTube because it's video instruction, but this written pattern is really, really simple and easy to follow even if that's not your jam. So here I have all 69 chain stitches. I'm gonna start up on my first row. So we're gonna count down one, two, three, and four. We're gonna double crochet in that fourth chain from our hook. So it's this one right here, the fourth one. If you need to rewind that and watch me count again, feel free to. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. That is a double crochet. We can see how that looks there. We're going to double crochet in the very next stitch and in each stitch all the way down. So we should wind up with 66 double crochets here in row one. Remember to have relaxed tension. We don't want tight, tense hands that are going to throw off um, the fit of this poncho. 
even if this is your first garment or one of your first projects, it is a mountain that you can climb, so don't be too tense or worried about it. So here we have our first few double crochets worked up. This is how it should be looking with that chain three in the very beginning. Your chain stitches also in this whole pattern are not going to count as a stitch. So whenever I tell you to chain something, don't count that as a stitch. So just go ahead and double crochet all the way down. This might take you a couple of minutes, so just go ahead and pause the video and work up all of those double crochets. I'm going to show you how to get started with this first rectangle, and then I'm going to kind of let you go off on your own to finish it up and make the second one. But you're going to do exactly the same thing two times through to make your two rectangles. So here I have row one done, all double crochets. I'm ready to start row two. I'm going to chain up three. There's one, two, and three chain stitches. We're going to flip it, turn your work to always work from the right to the left side of your rows. So here for row two, we're going to skip the first stitch and double crochet. This is our lace row, row two. So there we go. We skipped one. We started with a chain three. We skipped one and we double crocheted. Now we're going to chain one. We're going to skip one and we're going to double crochet again. So remember, skip over one and double crochet. That chain one, skip one is what's going to create the lacy look of this poncho. So here we should have what look like two kind of gaps. Chain one, skip one, double crochet. And we're just going to keep repeating this all the way down. Nothing's going to change. No matter what size you're making, you should wind up after you do your chain one, skip one, double crochet all the way down with a double crochet in the last stitch. And I'll show you that in just a second. But no matter what size you're making, you will have an even number of stitches in each row, which means that you'll always end on a double crochet in your lace rows. So here's how it should be looking. You should have these little gaps and double crochet space nicely. So just go ahead and continue that all the way down through the end of row two. Remember, this is what we're calling our lace row. We're just gonna be working a two row repeat for the entirety of our rectangles. So this is the first row of our two row repeat, our lace row, row two. This is what it looks like when it's all done. We've double crocheted in that last stitch. Make sure you don't stitch it all into the turning chain from the very first row. Chain up two and turn. Now you'll notice at the beginning of the lace row, we chain three, but at the beginning of our double crochet row, we just chain two. So now this is our double crochet row. We're just gonna work a double crochet in each stitch along, starting with this very first stitch here. Double crochet. Now we're gonna double crochet again into the chain one space. So that opening gap, just work right down into the gap. Don't worry about working into the chain one stitch it'll work fine if you just work into the gap. So that's how that should be looking. Double crochet in the next stitch. This should be the top of an actual stitch. And then into the chain one gap. And you're gonna continue this, you guessed it, all the way to the end of row three or our double crochet row. You're gonna be working alternately into chain one gaps and the tops of your double crochet stitches from our lace row all the way down. Now it's worth mentioning that in the written pattern below you'll see that there are stitch counts at the end of each row to tell you how many stitches you should have. But you'll notice that it's the same stitch number for all of your rows. So no matter what size you're making, whatever number of stitches you had in row one should be the same number of stitches that you have in every lace row if you count the chain one stitches and in your double crochet rows until the end of this rectangle. So here's the end of our row three, our double crochet row. This is how it should be looking. And we're just going to keep repeating lace row, double crochet row, lace row, double crochet row, or rows two and three, two and three, two and three, until we have the appropriate number of rows for our size. Now for me, making the size medium large, I am going to be working all the way th through row 69. So depending on your size, it'll change a little bit um, how many rows you need to make, but it's going to be about the same and you're just going to keep repeating this until you have that number of rows finished. So for me in the pattern it says to work up to row 69, so I'm going to work through row 69 until 69 is finished. And it is worth mentioning that all the sizes should end on an odd number row, so you should end on a double crochet row. 
that's just going to make things a little bit easier later on for seaming and it's going to make those seams a little bit stronger working off of double crochets instead of lace rows. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Here I am starting to repeat my lace row again. I'm just going to keep on going lace rows and double crochet rows until I have 69 rows again or the appropriate number for your size. And once that is done, once my first rectangle is done, I'm just going to break my yarn. I'm going to finish off and then I'm going to start this whole thing over again and make a second rectangle. If you need to rewind the video and watch from the beginning again, please feel free to do that as you need to. Now I have both rectangles done in my size. Believe it or not, this poncho is almost finished. We are well beyond halfway done at this point. So it's probably been a minute since I've seen you and you have two beautiful lacy rectangles in front of you. Congratulations, you are almost to being able to wear this poncho. Aren't you excited? I'm excited. Okay, so these should be about the same size. Sometimes a little stretching may occur. You may have an interested toddler like I do that stretches things out of proportion. Um, but in general, you should have two rectangles that look about the same. So we're going to fold these kind of interestingly um, and seam them up to create an interesting poncho heart shape. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to kind of form an L shape. Our first seam is going to be sewing the top of one rectangle. So what is the last row of one rectangle to the side of another rectangle, the rough edge of the other one. And I'm going to show you what I mean here. So basically we need all of the stitches of one rectangle going one way and the stitches of the other rectangle going the other way. You want to match up the ends of one side so that everything is straight. I know that it's really difficult to explain and it's much easier to just catch on visually. I'm so sorry I wasn't able to zoom out anymore. Um, my filming setup right now won't allow me to get a wider angle than this and these rectangles are really big. But just make sure that one rectangle is laying kind of lengthwise and one rectangle is laying kind of widthwise and you're going to match up the ends of one rectangle and the rough edge of another rectangle to create one gigantic L shape. So you're going to need some stitch markers. We're just going to hold things in place um, with some stitch markers. You can also use bobby pins or a spare piece of yarn. There's lots of different options if you don't have any stitch markers. So we're just going to match up these ends here. Again, we're sewing the end of a row on one rectangle to the rough edge of another rectangle. I really hope this is making sense to you guys, even though you can't see the entire picture here. Just go ahead and pin that where everything is laying nice and flat and there's no like pulling or puckering on either of your panels. I'm also gonna put a stitch marker here in the center, just kind of hold things nicely in place and I don't wind up stretching either piece of fabric in the process of sewing. So now at this point we really just have to sew along this seam. I'm going to use a mattress stitch because that's going to create um, a more invisible seam than a lot of other stitches would. It's also going to be a stronger seam, especially being that we're sewing into one of the panel's rough edges. Um, it can be a little tricky, so I wanted to use a simple seaming technique that's also strong and will keep your pieces joined together for all eternity. So we're going to need to cut a fairly long um, piece of stray yarn. I like to use the general rule that you need triple the amount of the length of your seam. So that's just kind of the general rule of thumb I go by. That usually gives me just enough to weave in my ends um, and make all the stitches I need to. So that's a little trick for you if you don't know how much yarn to cut. So we're going to go ahead and thread our tapestry needle. And we're going to create a knot at the end of the yarn, leaving a tail long enough to weave in. So I like to leave maybe about 8 inches of a tail just to give me plenty of space. Create a knot there. So you can see we have a nice bulky knot to keep things nice and anchored. I'm going to start here at the edge where things come together. There's no real rhyme or reason. I just always like going right to left on crochet projects. It just kind of keeps my brain 
all moving in one direction. So I'm going to come from the inside out with this mattress stitch. And what I mean by inside out, if you haven't worked a mattress stitch before, is that if you were to imagine the center of this seam, the space in between the two uh, panels that you're stitching, <clears throat> you want to insert your needle from the middle of that seam outward. So I'm going to work once into each row or into each stitch. So on the rough edge here, you can see I'm coming inside out on the edges of those rows, and then I'm coming inside out on those stitches. Now, if you find that stitching um, into every single stitch on one panel and then into every stitch on the edge of your rows is causing any pulling or puckering or gathering or anything funny is going on, feel free to stitch where you see fit. Um, to make things lay nice and flat. If you find that stitching in a certain spot um, works out better and makes things lie flat for you, by all means do that. It's always kind of difficult to explain like exactly where around the stitch you insert your needle. So feel free to watch this as many times as you need to see how I'm doing it, but at the same time you are a creative genius and I trust you to handle it and sew up your pieces that you've worked so hard making um, the way that you want to. So I'm just going to stitch along all the way, removing my um, pins, my stitch markers as I go. Just sewing back and forth, regular old mattress stitch. There are lots of other more in-depth tutorials on mattress stitching also, or you could use a traditional whip stitch if that's your, uh, your favorite thing. So just go ahead and stitch all the way down here. Make sure that you get that last stitch real good. I like to back stitch once or twice over that last stitch just to really lock things in place. Just a personal preference. And then you're going to want to go ahead and weave these ends. We don't want them hanging around for later. It just kind of, I don't know. I don't like leaving my ends unwoven because it confuses me. So we should have a giant L shape at this point. We should have two real long skinny panels kind of coming out from each other in a big L shape. So go ahead and weave those ends and then we're going to work our second seam. You will not believe how easy this is to fold up. So we're going to take the bottom of one panel, this one here, the one leg of our L, we're going to fold it in to meet the rough edge of the other leg of our L. So it doesn't matter which one you go with, you're just going to take it up from the bottom and fold it up to meet the top. Imagine you're just folding it in half like a sandwich. Now, we're going to take this other piece, once that's kind of all laid out nice and flat and things aren't fudged up in any weird way, we're going to take this piece and just fold it in to meet our other leg. So what we should have right now is ends that are all matching up and a seam that presents itself that needs to be sewn. So I'm again going to use my stitch markers. I'm going to pin these... Uh, pieces together. This is the second seam we're going to create and the last seam that we're going to sew. So there's really just, it's two rectangles, two seams, and you have this really cool, unique style poncho. So I'm just placing my stitch markers here, one on each end and one in the middle. You should have, make sure that you're not sewing along this big V shape. So there should be a little V at the top and that's going to be your neckline. There should be a big V at the bottom and that's going to be the bottom of your poncho. So make sure that you're not sewing up the bottom. Make sure you're sewing up that seam um, kind of along the side here. So again, just take a really long piece of yarn. We're going to thread our tapestry needle, create a knot. And I'm just going to kind of speedily hurry along here with the seam so that we're not here all weekend with this video. So we're just going to go ahead and sew right along this seam again starting on one side make sure you don't miss that very first stitch we're going to want to secure all of that and at this point you can really start to see the poncho taking shape you should have kind of a big i like to look at it as a heart maybe that's just me seeing hearts and everything um with a little bit of a angular shape i guess i don't know does it look like a heart to you guys comment below if it looks like a heart and tell me i'm not crazy so just go ahead and stitch all the way along here, 
back and forth, back and forth. Try not to get impatient and skip along and only make a few stitches to secure this because with the lacy nature of this poncho, it's going to show when you wear it if you don't really stitch into every available place. So I know that you've been at it a while here making these big giant rectangles, but I promise just go ahead and continue to take your time sewing up these panels and it'll all be worth it in the long run. Now, after this second seam is done, we're just going to create some edging along the neckline, some edging along the hemline, and then add on that tassel fringe. You can leave off any portion of this that is not really floating your boat. So if you don't want to edge off the neckline and the hemline and add the fringe, you don't have to. You can stop right here and wear your poncho out the door. But to me, the edging really kind of finishes it off and makes it look nice and polished. Also, if you're to leave the neckline how it is right now, um, it wouldn't look bad, but it is going to be a wider, more open neckline. The trim that we're going to add is going to kind of bring things in and make a real nice, clean, rounded edge. So just some food for thought, or if you're working with yarn from your stash and you don't have enough yardage, you can wear this poncho the way it is. Okay, so just go ahead and finish up here, stitching all the way along. One of these seams will be on the front and one will be on the back. So if on the first seam you are still kind of finding your stride and the second one looks a lot better or vice versa, you can always make one the back side and one the other side. Totally up to you. So stitching all the way to the very end here, I'm going to go ahead and weave these ends. And now we're ready to start the neckline. So at this point, our poncho assembly is done. And we just need to work around this rough edge of the neckline, but you can kind of see how things should be looking. You can even try it on at this point or have the person who's going to own the poncho, if you're giving it as a gift, try it on. Make sure the sizing is good. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and start in on the neckline. This is really, really simple and don't get worried about it. We're going to start with a slip knot. And we need to at this point decide what's going to be the front and what's going to be the back because you want to join your yarn to whichever side is going to be the back side so that our little tiny neckline seam is a little less noticeable on the back of the neck. So on the back side, once you've decided which side that's going to be, we're going to insert our hook right here next to kind of the point of our V. So join your yarn. We're going to chain just one. and two, and we're just gonna double crochet in each stitch all the way around. Now we're working into a rough edge here, so it's a little tricky. I'm gonna show you how I do it. I'm going to double crochet in the same stitch where I chained two. So there we go, we have our chain two and our double crochet. I'm gonna double crochet in the next stitch. And in the next stitch. Now, since we're not stitching into the actual tops of a finished row of stitches, we're stitching into the side or the rough edge of these rows. What I'm going to do to also create a nice pretty neckline is I'm only going to stitch each double crochet into the end of a row of stitching. So because we're stitching into the rough edge and because double crochets are fairly long stitches, if we wanted this to lay nice and flat, we could add more double crochets, but because this is a neckline and I kind of want to pull things in to lay nice and flat and not have a lot of extra stitches going on around the neck, I'm just going to stitch once into the end of each row. So you can kind of see how I'm doing that here, and it's not going to pull things to the point where it's like gaping and it looks like it's pulling, but it is going to very, very softly kind of shape this neckline into a nice rounded edge and pull things into just a nice shape. It's not going to um, create a funny looking fabric. It's just going to be just stretched enough to pull things nicely when it's worn. So you can see here how it should be looking. Basically, Every time that you see a lace row, you're going to see two double crochets before the next lace row. 
if that makes sense. So a double crochet for each lace row and a double crochet for each row of double crochets. So just go ahead and stitch all the way along around to the front of the poncho and down this uh, first side of the neckline. We're going to basically just do one double crochet in each stitch all the way around, but I do want to show you how that looks when you get to the V in the front because it can be a little bit confusing since we have this join situation. So once you get down here to the where the two panels meet, the V in the front of your poncho, I'm just going to keep stitching where I just have one double crochet in each row. But you can see here how that looks. I'm going to work down into the join itself as well just to kind of finish things off and make sure that things aren't stretching too much or you know we're not like skipping any areas that need to be worked. So like I said here at the V in the front we're going to work one double crochet into that join where those panels come together. This is how it should be looking. Really you can't even find the stitch that I worked into the join just because everything kind of comes together nice and seamlessly and especially anyone that's just looking at this poncho is not gonna be able to tell really what you did with the neckline here. It's just gonna look like a nice finished edge. So continue on around all the way up and over that other side of the neckline. You should have about the same number of double crochets from one side to the other of this neckline. And you can see here how it's kind of on that first side curving in just a bit up over that shoulder. And that's what I'm talking about when I say that it's not that you have too few stitches for the number of rows you're working. It's just that you're just working enough to bring things together and really create a nice neckline shape. So we're going to work all the way back down to where we started and when we get back down there we're going to slip stitch to join and that's the end of round one. We're going to chain up two and we're going to double crochet in each stitch all the way around. So now this is a lot easier here in round two because we're working into the tops of the stitches themselves. So just go ahead and work one double crochet in each stitch all the way around starting with this very first one. And like I said, lots easier just working into the tops of the stitches. We don't have to worry about where to stitch, how many stitches, the shape of the thing. Just work one stitch in each all the way around. And this is going to vary a bit depending on what size you're making. Um, so don't worry too much about a stitch count here. Just worry about it looking something like mine. If you find that you have a lot of like ruffling happening or a lot of what looks like loose open neckline happening you probably have too many stitches or if things are pulling and your panels are starting to not really lay flat anymore um, then you have too few stitches so you can adjust from there. So working down the front side when you get to that front V we're just going to keep continuing one double crochet in each stitch all the way around and then work back up that other side. This is going to be the second row, our last row of double crochet. Our neckline is just going to get one more row, a third row, but that one is just going to be a nice even row of single crochet all the way around. I love finishing off a longer stitch or a more intricate stitch or something with just a nice simple round of single crochet. I think it just gives a really nice edge and I love the way that it sits on the work. So after we've slip stitched to join our, our round two, we're going to just chain up one and we're going to single crochet in each stitch all the way around. If you're running short on yardage because you're working with yarn from your stash or um, you're just worried about, you know, playing yarn chicken and possibly running out. You can leave off this last round of single crochet. I just really like the way that it finishes things off. So go ahead and work all the way around. Regular single crochets. Look how nice this is looking. You guys, I'm ready to wear this. Are you? Are you ready to wear it yet? Okay, so after you get all the way back down, we're going to slip stitch to join once again. We're going to finish off this yarn yarn over and pull it all the way through and out and we're going to weave those ends. Now our neckline is totally done. Look how cute! Nice little scoop kind of crew neckline. It looks so much more polished than it did when it was those V's, huh? I think so. 
Okay, so now that our neckline is done, we just need to do our hemline edging, which basically is just going to be a nice even round of single crochets all the way around the bottoms of these panels. So you're going to be working all along this rough edge, and it's just going to finish things off real nice and simple. I'm just going to basically do two rounds of single crochet in each stitch. Nice and simple, just finish this baby off. I don't want to add too much length here because I still am going to add that tassel style fringe. So go ahead and create a slip knot. We're going to join our yarn. You can join anywhere on the hemline of the poncho that you like. I do recommend being aware though of where your the back of your poncho is. I'm going to join here right along this seam just because we already have a bunch of sewing happening and weaving in another end and having our join right here is going to be less noticeable than starting in a random spot. So pick a seam, join your yarn to the end of it, chain one, and start single crocheting. Now I'm zooming in here so that you can see where exactly I'm single crocheting. You're going to be working both into the rough edge of a panel and into the top stitches of the panel. But don't be alarmed, it's fairly straightforward no matter which way you go. Now here with the single crochets, in order to keep everything nice and straight, I'm going to be stitching basically three times three single crochets into the end of each two row repeat. So just like how I talked about with when you uh, are working into that rough edge on the neckline where every row of double crochet and lace rows, a lace row and a double crochet row, you should have three stitches. Now when you get to a corner, we're going to work three single crochets into the corner itself to turn that corner and keep everything nice and uh, angular. Now here, once I've turned the corner, I'm going to be working down the foundation chain of my panel. So I'm just going to work one single crochet into each stitch of that foundation chain. Nice and easy. It'll keep everything nice and flat and pretty. Once I finish up with this foundation chain, I will continue on with the other rough edge of my other panel. Again, rough edges here with single crochet little tricky but however you can stitch it to get it to lie flat is perfect for me. I'm going to be working about three single crochets among each two row repeat. So go ahead and just continue this along. This is how it should be looking. Everything should be laying nice and flat. And once you've finished up single crocheting all the way around where you started, you're going to slip stitch to join, you're going to chain up one, and you're going to single crochet again all the way around until you have finished two complete rounds of single crochet all the way around those edges. Now remember that first round, you got three single crochets in each corner that you turn. There should be two corners. And then in that second round, I didn't do anything special in the corners. I just worked one simple single crochet in each stitch all the way around. So now that that's done, I've finished off that edging. I still have to weave those ends that you see, but this is how your poncho should be looking. All we have left to do is that tassel style fringe. Unless you don't want any fringe, then you are done, my friend. But this is how your poncho should look. You should have a nice clear edge defined on those panels that we sewed together. This is how the front kind of point should be looking since we did that uh, three single crochet increase on that point on the first row or round of edging. And then remember the second round of edging is just going to get one single crochet in each stitch including the corners. So after you weave those ends we're ready for our tassel style fringe. Now you are going to need quite a bit of yardage um, left over to accomplish this fringe but it's really easy to make and I think it adds a nice finishing touch. So here you can see I have quite a few little tassels done um, and what I'm doing is I'm just skipping three stitches we're working off of those edging, hemline edging stitches. I'm skipping three stitches in between each tassel. Now if you wanted to kind of stretch this and do fewer tassels that take less yarn, um, you could just do every four or five stitches. It's really up to you, but I skipped three in between each tassel. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap the yarn around my four fingers here. One, two, three, four, five, and six times. So once you've wrapped around six times, I'm going to slip that loop of yarn off of my fingers holding the top steady so it doesn't unravel. I'm going to snip my yarn from the ball 
And I'm going to also use those scissors to cut that loop in half right there at the bottom. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing there. Just snip all those strands. So now we should have 12 strands or 12 ends, I should say. There's six strands, but 12 ends. So we're going to form that into a little loop here. Use your hook to pull the center of those six strands through your stitch. So here's my last tassel. I'm gonna count over one, two, three. And into that fourth one, I'm gonna insert my hook from back to front. I'm gonna put that loop over my hook, pull it pretty tight, and then pull it through that stitch. You may have to do a little wiggling to get all those strands to come through nicely. Now pull that loop partially through the stitch. Don't pull it all the way out. We want those tails hanging out there. And now we need the tails to go down and through. So I'm going to gently bring my fingers through that loop. Make sure not to yank those tails through the stitch. And I'm gonna just pull those tails down and through. Tighten up that tassel so that things don't come undone. And then your tassel's done. Now we just need to trim it to size. I left these probably about two and a half inches long, um, but I didn't measure all of them. I kind of eyeballed it. You definitely could if you wanted everything to be perfect, but it's kind of a bohemian look that doesn't need to be exactly right to the millimeter, but up to you. Everyone is different. I'm more a go with the flow kind of gal. So go ahead and make as many tassels as you like, tie them all on, and now your project is done and ready to wear. I can't wait to see all of the ways that you guys wear your ponchos. Make sure to tag me on social media so that I can see them at Sorella, or join the Facebook group, which I'll link in the description box below as well, where you can share your creations with any of my patterns. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please do so by clicking that red button below your screen. I can't wait to see all the ponchos you guys make. Thank you so much for enjoying this video tutorial. I'll see you next time.